Hello, this is Domenico Composto again, and this is the second part of a two-part video uh, regarding non-price determinants of demand, graphing substitutes and complements. So today we're going to look at graphing complements. So looking at complementary goods. And we're going to use the example of iPhone and iPhone cases. iPhone cases as an accessory or a complementary good to the iPhone. So graph A will be the market for iPhones. And graph B will be the market for iPhone cases. Okay. Again, we're looking at complementary goods. Just going to emphasize that. And we're going to have two downward sloping demand, or three. We'll have a three downward sloping demand curve. So here's one. And we're going to have another four iPhone cases. We'll be measuring quantity on the x-axis and then price on the y-axis. We'll, we'll label this D1 and we're going to label this uh, D2. And we'll have a particular price set by for iPhones at this point with a quantity of demand at this point. And let's just assume that iPhone cases have this particular price with this quantity of demand. Okay. All right. So we're going to label this Q1, price P1. And we're going to change price here. So I'll label this P3 with the quantity demanded at Q3. And we'll just label some points just to help us with our analysis. Here's point A. And then we'll eventually see that this is going to be point C. So what would happen if iPhone or Apple were to increase the price of their phones? Right? If the price of iPhones were to go up, what would happen to the demand for the iPhone cases? Okay, the demand, let's find out. So here we have iPhone, and they decide to raise price from P1 to P2, leading to an, a decrease in the quantity of demand according to the law of demand from Q1 to Q2, which is a movement along the demand curve from point A to point B. So if Apple were to raise price, there's going to be less people able to consume iPhones, and as a result of less people being able to consume iPhones, there's going to be less consumption of the complementary good or accessory, which in this case is the iPhone case. So demand for iPhone cases would actually decrease if iPhones, the dominant good, were to raise price. So that would lead to a fall in demand from, D1, uh, from D2 to D3. Although price is constant at P3, there's no change in price, we see a fall in demand due to the decreased consumption of the iPhone. So the quantity of demand at D3, at a price of D P3, would decrease from Q3 to Q4, from point C to point D. Right? So we see that there's a decrease in demand. So if iPhone were to raise price from P1 to P2, we would see demand fall. So that is a negative relationship with complementary goods in which one good raises price, it leads to the fall in demand of the complementary good. That's an inverse, negative, or indirect relationship, however you want to call it. So let's go ahead and analyze this model as you would on a paper one, paper two, or paper three exam for the new IB economic syllabus. As can be seen, we have two graphs, graph A and graph B. In graph A, we are uh, looking at the market for iPhones. And in graph B, we are looking at the market for iPhone cases. 
iPhone cases are a complementary good for iPhones. And both graphs, we're measuring the quantity on the x-axis, we're measuring price on the y-axis. We have three downward sloping demand curves labeled D1, D2, and D3, downward sloping according to the law of demand. And in graph A, we notice that iPhones are priced at P1 with a quantity demanded at Q1. And in the market for iPhone cases, we see a price established at P3 with a quantity of demand at Q3 along the, uh, on the uh, D2 demand curve or point C. Apple decides to raise price for iPhones from P1 to P2. And in accordance to the law of demand, that leads to a decrease in the quantity of demand from Q1 to Q2, which is a movement along the demand curve from point A to point B. This impacts the consumption of iPhone cases, which is the complementary good. As a result of less consumption of iPhones due to the raise in price or rise in price, there's a decrease in the demand for iPhone cases, shifting demand from D2 to D3. Although price is constant at P3, there is a decrease in demand from D2 to D3, which leads to a decrease in the quantity of demand along, on the D3 curve at point D uh, at Q4. Okay, so that's uh, an analysis of this graph. Now let's uh, look at this graph in terms of a decrease in the price for iPhones. All right, so let's go back to our original starting point. All right, we're just going to reset this. All right, we're going to be at P1 and Q1 for iPhones. And then we're going to go back to our original D2 curve for the iPhone cases. Okay, here we go. All right, so there's our starting point. So here we're going to change this. We're going to have the price for iPhones fall. We're going to take a look at what happens to the demand. Okay, let's see. Price falls. What's going to happen to demand? So if we take price down, we're going to reduce price from P1 to P2. And in accordance to the law of demand, there's an increase in the quantity of demand from Q1 to Q2. So it's a movement along the demand curve from point A to point B. If price falls, there's greater consumption of iPhones. And those people who have consumed those iPhones will want the accessory of the iPhone case. So we see the demand for iPhone cases increase from D2 to D3. Price is constant at P3, but at D3, we see an increase in the quantity of demand from Q3 to Q4, taking us to point D. All right, so there's an increase in demand. So if iPhone lowers price, we see that demand for the iPhone cases rises. So that is a negative relationship, an indirect or in um, a negative relationship between the two. As price falls, demand for the iPhone cases rises, and vice versa, as iPhone raises price, demand for iPhone cases falls. So they move in opposite directions. So let's go ahead and analyze this as we would on a paper one exam. As can be seen, we have two graphs, graphs A and graph B, representing complementary goods. Graph A is the market for iPhones, graph B is the market for iPhone cases. On the x-axis for both graphs, we're measuring quantity, and on the y-axis, we're measuring price. We have three downward sloping demand curves, D1, D2, D3, in accordance to the law of demand. And in graph A, we notice that iPhones are priced at P1 with a quantity of demand at Q1, all right, at point A. In the market for iPhone cases, we see a price of P3 with a quantity of demand um, 
on their demand curve of D2 at Q3. As a result of iPhone lowering their price from P1 to P2, there's an increase in the quantity of demand from Q1 to Q2, which is a movement along the demand curve from point A to point B. As a result of a lowered price for iPhones, there's increased consumption of iPhones. These consumers will also uh, be buy the accessory complementary good of iPhone cases, which leads to an increase in demand from D2 to D3. Although iPhone cases are still priced at P3, <coughs> a non-price determinant, in this case, the price of a related good, has led to the increase in demand for iPhone cases. So at a price of P3, Along their, at, on their demand curve, the new demand curve of D3 at point D, there's an increase in the quantity of demand from Q3 to Q4. And that's it. So we have seen uh, how substitute goods and complementary goods impact um, the demand curves uh, in both of these situations. And that's it. Thank you so much for your time. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and to comment.